Hello, welcome. Hello. I'm Courtney. Hi, Nick. We are from San Francisco, California. Super honored to be here. Um, half of my family is from Ireland. It's my first time here, so I'm really quite uh, thrilled to be in this land. It's beautiful, and everything that's going on here at Ballymaloo is mind-blowing uh, so far. So, We assume that none of you know anything about us, which is great. Uh, so we'll start off... <laughs> <laughs> We'll start off there and just kind of, um, you know, give you a little history of who we are, where we come from, what we do, and how we kind of fit into uh, this, this festival a little bit. Yeah? Do you want to start or do you want me to? Go ahead. All right. So, anyone been to San Francisco before? Wow, tons of you. Fantastic. So, we're in a neighborhood called the Mission District of San Francisco. We have a, um, a small restaurant there. It's been there for about 10 years. We've been there for about five and a half. Uh, Chad Robertson and Liz Pruitt started it and um, brought us in, actually brought Nick in in February of 2011 and I got roped in about April of 2011. Uh, the story goes that I came in to butcher a goat and never left and it's fairly accurate. Uh, and as we've kind of evolved the restaurant a little bit, things are continually changing. Um, we wrote a book, it's part of the reason that we're here. We wrote a book fairly early on in the life of Bar Tartine and on our cooking adventures at Bar Tartine. And in many ways, it forced us to find um, our voice, or a little bit of our voice, should I say, within the food that we cook and within the place that we are and where we cook and cooking together. Uh, cooking with someone so closely, sometimes, you know, we each come with a story and, you know, a, as Kamal was alluding to, you know, we tell our story through food in a lot of ways. It's how we communicate. Uh, and so having two stories to tell sometimes, it's not that they clash, it's just that they kind of get interwoven and we have to come out and try and, you know, have a, have a dialogue with each other and with our guests all the time uh, and not allowing the stories to get too clunky. So within that, you know, what we've discovered is kind of our voice, at least um, as we understand it today at Bar Tartine, is that we're makers. We, we make things. And a lot of that just stems from the curiosity of understanding how things are made. It's not that we try and be overly dogmatic and don't think we should bring in other people's products. Uh, there are people who make products that are you know, way better than certain ones that we make, and so we just don't make those ones. Um, or we just don't have them in the restaurant. Or we find a way you know, to work with what we can make. So for us, it's really about the curiosity of how things are made and then making them and finding a way to use them in the restaurant. That comes you know, down to our, all of our cheese making in-house, all of our dairy culturing in-house, uh, our spices, uh, lacto-fermented sodas, all of the, the pickles and ferments, mainly out of necessity because our farmers bring us too many vegetables, which is a lovely problem to have. Um, curing of fish and meats are all done in the restaurant as well. What else? Well, spices, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Go ahead. We got into making things. Um, Courtney and I both came from the middle part of the United States. Uh, her family, Jewish and Irish, um, living in Chicago. And so she grew up with a lot of these kind of old, old, uh, old world flavors. Sure. Um, what were some of the Borscht examples? Borscht and boiled cabbage. So just cabbage in two different, very different spectrums. It was spoiled. I got both. I got both. Yeah. I was in rural Michigan and had uh, Polish grandparents on one, on one side and then Hungarian and German influences too. And so, but uh, our families both made things. So my mother always had sauerkraut going when I was a kid and I grew up just loving kind of fermented and funky and really peasant flavors. And so we both kind of brought those tastes with us. Um, and so what we, really what we do at the restaurant is we try to honor um, old world traditions and techniques, um, ways of preservation, um, and using everything. So, for instance, we have a relationship with a husband and wife couple in California that they grow everything for the restaurant, or a lot of what we use at the restaurant, and we use everything that they have at the farm. So all of the ugly vegetables, the pretty vegetables, um, we're drying Weeds. peppers and making paprika powder there, um, distilling things. Um, but it's kind of this... Uh, this notion of just using everything um, and not expecting certain things to be delivered every day in, in perfect condition, but kind of working with nature and um, using 100% of what's, what, it, what they grow, what's available versus expecting certain things. 
Absolutely, and that's something that we really feel strongly about. We have a lot of farmers that will bring us B-grade vegetables or what they call B-grade vegetables that might not end up on the supermarket shelf but are absolutely delicious, sometimes more delicious because they've actually picked them you know, at the peak of ripeness, which not only means that they taste good, but they have a nutritive value that's extremely high. So that's something that we really pay attention to, too, is a lot of the processes that we use at the restaurant are increasing nutritive value. Uh, and that just, we don't know what people are walking in the door with. We want people to feel really good when they leave, but we want to make sure that we're not adding to, you know, the onslaught of things that we all kind of have to, that our bodies have to do on a regular basis just to keep us going. So we try and really nurture the body through the fermented foods, through the fermented vegetables, cooking with all of those flavors as well, and not seeing, you know, fermented foods as just condiments, as a lot of people do in, um, in the States and probably other parts of the world, but a little bit more in the States because it's not necessarily based in a lot of our traditional food, if there is such a thing. And that's something to touch on as well, is people often ask us what kind of food you cook, and we often try and skirt around that question because we kind of cook in a lot of ways. It's, I mean, fusion food, not for, you know, just because it is what it is. We, we are a melting pot. Like, we have cooks in the kitchen from Laos. We have some that are from... Um, you know, Oaxaca from Guatemala, we have, from where else right now? All over we've had... Singapore, yeah. Singapore, we've had cooks from Ireland. So we have all these people coming in with a, a whole background of food and, and everyone wants to talk about it. And so we learn, oh, your grandmother used to make this sauce? Great. Let's do that. Let's do it in the way that we do. So, you know, we're continuing to to formulate that story based on where we are and the people that are cooking with us. So from day to day, you know, the food... We always try and make food that has some sort of nostalgia. We find that if flavors are really just plucked from nowhere and put together on a plate, that people can't often relate. And for us, it's really important that people understand the food that we're putting out. It doesn't mean you've had the dish exactly as it is, but there's something to understand. If anyone comes to the demo tomorrow, for example, there's a sprouted lentil croquette. So we sprout a lot of the grains, you know, the... Um, all the nutrients and enzymes are more bioavailable for our bodies to take in, so that's really important to us. We can also use them raw at that point, even though we end up cooking them, they retain a little bit more of their nutrients, and they just have a different texture, different flavor, and we're ostensibly we're making falafel with it. I mean, so the texture is something that someone can understand, but the flavors may not be, or the ingredients that have been combined into it may not be exactly what, you know, you grew up with, or somebody grew up with, or what they remember having somewhere. But it's a texture and an aroma, and there's an understanding there, which allows us to bring people in, or we hope to, this is our goal, to bring people in, everyone sitting at a table together, having an experience that gives them some common ground. We don't really want to cook food that's overly cerebral. We, we aim for it to be delicious before anything else. Um, and so for us, that does mean having something that is understood. An interesting point with the, the peasant flavors and the kind of sour, funky, fermenty flavors is um, a lot of the questions we get, um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of periodicals and um, um, writers in general want to kind of box the, this into a trend, into mm -hmm. a uh, fermentation, into like a trend, and they say, well, how long do you think it's going to last, and what do you think about this trend? And it's really kind of funny, we've, we've kind of... Um, come to uh, enjoy when we get asked that question because it's it's kind of a ridiculous thing because it's not a tradition. This is the history of food. Yeah, and uh, for people to, to we kind of got lost in the you know the canned and boxed and sterile food movement after the fifties, but um, a lot of chefs and thank God for Ballymolo, but there's the incredible stuff that's going on here. But um, we're we're headed back towards being in line with nature and tradition again in, in the restaurant world and just in, in general, um, getting nourishment for ourselves. But um, it's, it's, it's a funny question, is it? That thinking that sauerkraut's a trend when we think that actually like uh, <laughs> the entire middle section of the supermarket is actually the trend. Right, and hopefully it's going far, far away very soon. Yep. So, yeah. That's kind of what we do at Bar 13. Um, yeah, we have a really good time. We're glad to be here. You know, we walk around and taste the foods in the gardens, and, and that's really what it's all about. It's really about everyone coming together, starting to understand where the food comes from over here, where the food comes from over here, that we're all together on sort of a common mission to say, like, hey, let's rethink how we're doing this. 
and how can we do it better and how can we include people and how can we all come together and really understand what it means to, to feed people, which is, ready for the hippie part, totally the language of love. It's like how we show people love, it's we feed them. Um, yes, I'm totally from California. Um, <laughs> but it's true, I mean, people say, you know, it's a, it's a birthday or a celebration or anything major that happens, we come together around food. It's a language we all understand. It's something that has to happen to, you know, f to a certain degree um, in order for us to survive. And so we feel really honored that we get to feed people and we take that responsibility as seriously as we can as far as how we come at it, the food that we're bringing into the restaurant and how we're cooking it so that when, you know, we do get to... Uh, to put food inside of people's bodies that we can hopefully give them a really good experience, both as far as them seated in the restaurant, how they feel when they eat it, and most importantly, how they feel when they leave and the next day. So, yeah, that's kind of our, that's our momentary mission. Thanks, guys.